still able to take questions after the four-hour talk show. Alex Jones, thank you for being with us today. Do you ever get tired of talking? You know, I really don't get tired of talking because we're warning people about very serious things that are happening in the world. We have the Anglo-American establishment based in England and the United States that has enslaved our people. And they are using our wealth, our military, our name to carry out this globalist empire, this um, unipolar world, instead of having a multipolar world. And in the PNAC documents, Dick Cheney, uh, the vice president and others, called for a new world order or a global government controlled by the United States and England, but at the expense of the American people. So I'm not only against uh, the United States through proxy starting wars with Russia like they did in South Africa, uh, Obsidia and Abkhazia, or what they've done in Afghanistan or Iraq. I'm also against the police state they're setting up here domestically, how we're losing our liberties, uh, and what's happening in my country, and having to pay taxes for these things that are unpopular. The American people are just like the Russian people, or the Chinese people, or the British people. We want to have trading partners, we want to be friends, we want to get along, just like the Russian people want to get along. Uh, but our leaders have hijacked our nations and are using the West. Uh, against uh, the East, and that's wrong. And so that's why I'm speaking out, because I am a patriotic American uh, who doesn't want the name of my country uh, being destroyed uh, by the United States and its people being used as mercenaries uh, for this global corporate system. One of your most publicized views was about the United States government allegedly having a hand in planning and carrying out 9-11 attacks. Do you still believe in that? There are over 200 examples of declassified documents where the U.S. government staged terror attacks, fully carried them out themselves, or hired criminal groups internationally to fund terrorists to carry out attacks. We need a huge Pearl Harbor event to scare the public, a huge sneak attack on the order of 3,000 dead, which 9-11 did do. Pearl Harbor killed 3,000, or right at 3,000. We need a huge catalyzing event to terrorize the public into accepting wars, preemptive wars, invading sovereign nations. And that's exactly what happened. And people say, well, why did they do it? They did it for the trillions uh, in oil that are uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan, the trillions of discovered oil, trillions of dollars. They did it for the hundreds of billions a year in no-bid weapons contracts. And they also did it to set up a domestic police state here in the United States to start spying on the American people, to start arresting political dissidents, to start cracking down on Internet freedom and the freedom of the press. And they've done that to a lot of people. I'm one of the few you know, big guys that's left standing. Right now, the United States and to some degree the rest of the world find themselves in the midst of another crisis crisis, financial crisis, the Wall Street meltdown, the global credit crunch. Do you think uh, it was all premeditated? The central banks issued all this liquidity. They changed the rules in the mid-90s to where they could sell basically junk bonds and debt into the market. Now, when those had original value, before the public knew about the Ponzi scheme, they were able to buy real assets. Now what they've done is they've cut off liquidity, currency, money, loans, credit to the American people, to Main Street, to corporations, to companies, to states, to local governments. Then they terrorized the Congress. And the U.S. Congress was threatened a few weeks ago with martial law if they didn't pass the banker bailout. The banker bailout really gave them immunity, unlimited power. As Bloomberg Financial reported, it wasn't $700 billion, It's more like $5 trillion that's in there. And so you have these international offshore banks capitalizing now on U.S. taxpayer money in the multi-trillions, so they are, are now building up their capital while cutting it off of the population, allowing for a depression in the real economy, an implosion, so the banks can come in and buy up the stock market, buy up companies with uh, leveraged buyouts, and consolidate the economy. Just as the congressional record clearly shows that the 1929 crash in the United States was orchestrated by J.P. Morgan Chase, by the Rockefellers, and others as an implosion, this is an engineered implosion, and now out of it, the Anglo-American establishment based in London, D.C., and New York has announced what we said years ago they would announce. They need a global consortium run by central banks, worldwide who then set the price of currencies or a global currency worldwide giving them total control so they engineer the crisis 
They create the problem, regardless of whether it was on purpose or not. We know it was. But regardless, they create the crisis, and then they come in and offer the solution, which is giving them unlimited capital, unlimited control, unlimited power over world markets to now create a tripolar, a global currency regulated and controlled by them. Do you think it's really that serious? Uh, millions of people are losing their homes. Factories are shutting down everywhere. And they're talking about five to ten years of reduced credit. And so the United States has been incredibly wealthy because of our free market. We, it's been a great country. But no, we're entering into systemic economic crisis. Because right now people have 15% inflation. What is that going to mean when it's 25%? And that's every year compounded. People on fixed incomes in the last seven years have lost around half their purchasing power. Okay, my grandmother, who saved her whole life, is completely broke. We're having to help her out financially. A lot of old people uh, are having to, you know, literally go into shelters. It's been more than 10 years since your first documentary, America Destroyed by Design, was released. And in that film, you warned about the danger of China buying into the U.S. infrastructure. Now, uh, more than a decade later, we have not only Chinese, but also Russians and Arabs buying into the U.S. companies. For example, we have a big Russian billionaire, uh, Alexei Mordashov, uh, now uh, having a portfolio of five major plants in the United States, five major metal plants. What do you think about that? Are you concerned? I am against sovereignty and infrastructure being owned by foreign companies. Uh, I, I think we, we, we have way too much of it. Most of our ports, most of our roads are just being handed off. They're not even really being paid for. Now, I'm not against the Japanese or the Russians or the British coming here and building plants and building factories and giving people jobs. That builds the sovereignty and the strength, and that's true interdependence and people trading with each other. So I'm not against a Russian businessman building factories here. He's coming here because Americans are decent workers and, and our wages have gone down enough. We're almost like a third world country. Uh, but I am against uh, infrastructure, ports and roads, and what was owned by the people, what was owned by the government, in trust, having that being handed over for pennies on the dollar. Before this financial crisis, we had another major scare on the U.S television channels and that was Russia and its involvement in South Ossetia in Georgia. What do you think about it? If you look at Georgia, it's right above Turkey and it's right beside Iran. And so they need those air bases so they can attack Iran in the future if they need to, you know, off into the future, just like they waited 14 years to go back after Iraq. They need Georgia as an air base to project power into the Caucasus, into Russia, into Eastern Europe, into Central Asia. It's at that key crossroad there on the Caspian Sea, uh, as uh, you well know. The American people are good people. They became decadent and lazy and very trusting of our media. The reason the American people were so angry with Russia was because our media lied. Uh, on 888, when the attack happened, I turned on CNN and it said, Russia has invaded Georgia. Russia is attacking Georgia. And then the lie collapsed, and then the mainstream media had to say, okay, it's true, Georgia snuck attack Russia, but then the West stabbed Georgia in the back and said, oh, uh, the Georgian president lied to us and said the Russians attacked, but it turns out that he actually attacked them. And then they said the Russians over-responded. Uh, they had an overreaction. They didn't have an overreaction. They went in and cleaned those areas out, bolstered their defenses in Abkhazia and South Ossetia, and pulled back. Uh, and, I mean, I have to just tell it like it is. I'm an American patriot, red, white, and blue, you know, gun-owning, you know, capitalist free market. And I see Russia trying to be like that, and I see Russia trying to play fair, and I frankly don't want to have my criminal government and it is criminal, it's been hijacked, launching sneak attacks on Russia and then insulting my intelligence, telling me that Russia snuck attacked them. It's because I love the United States and I want the world to know that the American people are not evil and that the American people mean well and that we've been lied to, that I'm going on international television to tell people the truth. 
It's because I don't want it done in my name or my family's name or my country's name. I want these international banking oligarchs out of my country, and I want to have free trade and be friends with everybody in the world. 